Hey guys, Colin 20 here. Today I wanted to talk about the history and discontinuation of the iPod. In my opinion, it's one of the most important products ever made. I apologize for this video not being as high quality as my other videos. This video is very rushed because I only have a few hours to film and edit this. With all the announcements, let's start the video. Roll the intro. The iPod had a huge impact on the iPhone and most smartphones we use today. If it weren't for the iPod, most phones like the iPhone probably would have not existed. Starting out with the history, Apple introduced the first iPod on October 23rd, 2001. Some of the features of the device were it could hold a thousand songs in your pocket, which was a lot of music for 2001. Also, the device was super small. It was about the size of a card deck, which was very small for 2001. Most media players at the time were CD players and very big chunky MP3 players. The iPod was different from its competitors because the interface was simple and easy to use. And other other mp3 players at the time wouldn't allow you to scroll through songs rapidly like the iPod did with its click wheel. Because other mp3 players, you had to press that button a bunch of times to get to the song you wanted to get to. The first gen iPod stored song on a hard drive, which was a new idea for the time because most mp3 players at the time used flash, which was expensive and also didn't have very high capacity. Before I talk about the iPod mini, I would like to say I'm not going to be talking about every single iPod generation ever because that would take way too much time. So I'm just going to be mentioning the first gen products from each version of the iPod, so like iPod Nano. Next, let's talk about the iPod Nano. The iPod Nano was released on September 7, 2005. The main feature of the device was it was very small and portable. During the Apple keynotes, Steve Jobs asked the audience, You ever wonder what this pocket's for? <laughs> I've always wondered that. Well, now we know, because this is the new iPod Nano. Showing how small it really was. Another big feature of the device was the flash storage. Previous iPods used hard drives which were less durable and not as fast as solid state storage. Sadly this iPod had battery issues. Multiple iPod Nanos have exploded or even caught on fire. Next let's talk about the iPod Mini which I should have talked about before the iPod Nano because it came out first. The first generation iPod Mini was released on January 6, 2004. The main features of the device were it was super small at the time. It was tiny compared to its much bigger brother, the iPod. The iPod mini also came in lots of colors. Pink, green, gold, silver, and blue. Instead of a hard drive, this iPod used a micro drive, which was much smaller than a typical hard drive. The iPod mini came in two storage configurations, 4GB and 6GB. Most of the case was made out of anodized aluminum, which had a very premium feel. Next, let's talk about the iPod Shuffle. The iPod Shuffle was a small, thin-like device, which was about the size of a USB stick, which you could hang around your neck on a lanyard. One thing that made the iPod Shuffle different than other iPod iPod models is the lack of a screen. The iPod was completely controlled by buttons. The first gen iPod Shuffle was released on January 11, 2005. The iPod Shuffle had a USB which you could plug into your computer which was used to transfer songs onto the iPod. The iPod Shuffle came in two storage sizes, 512 megabytes and 1 gigabyte. Last but not least, the iPod Touch. The first gen iPod Touch was released in September 5th, 2005. This iPod was very different from the rest, as it was the only iPod, except for the iPod Nano 7th gen and 6th gen, to have a touch screen. The iPod Touch first gen was essentially an iPhone without the camera and other features such as phone capabilities. Which brings us to where we are now, iPod Touch 7th Gen, the last iPod ever produced. As far as design goes, the iPod hasn't changed since the iPod Touch 5th Gen, which was released in 2012. The only thing that has really changed on the iPod Touch 6th and 7th Gens is the internals. Apple has just been upgrading the specs such as the processor and the RAM. Everything else has essentially been the same. Same cameras, same body, same battery. Pretty much all the parts have been the same, except for the core internals like CPU and RAM. For right now, you can still buy an iPod Touch at $200 for the 32GB and with lots of colors. With that brief history of the iPod out of the way, next let's talk about all the iPods that I own. Over the years, I've had many iPods, probably over 20. 
However, now I only have about three. The three iPods I have are the iPod Touch 1st generation, iPod Touch 3rd generation, iPod Touch 6th gen, which is just a shell. Now I'm going to talk about each iPod and how I got them. So this iPod Touch 1st gen I got on eBay for around, I think, 20 bucks. It's running iOS 3.1.3. I've had multiple of these over the years. Um, this one's jailbroken, and as you can see, it's got a few games. You can't really see them that well because the camera. That's my iPod Touch 1st gen. I don't use it that much. Next is my iPod Touch 3rd gen. I somewhat use this one as a dedicated music player and sometimes to play games because it's jailbroken. It runs iOS 4.1. I downgraded it from 5.1.1. It's got quite a few games on it. Lots of the old iOS classics. I don't use it that often, but I'd say it's my most used iPod. I got this one off eBay for, I think, around $30. It's a 32 gig. I forgot to mention this is a uh, 16 gigabyte iPod Touch. I don't use this one much because it doesn't have volume buttons and also it doesn't have Bluetooth and it's just on an old iOS so there's not much I can do with it. And last, which I have here, is my iPod Touch 6th gen. I got this thing in 2016. It was one of my first Apple devices. I had an iPhone 4 before and uh, that was an old device at the time so this was a huge leap in technology. Um, it was much faster than my 4S. This was my first real modern Apple device so this device is very special to me. I wish I didn't destroy it. Um, I basically threw it on the ground because the battery was low, um, the screen shattered, and then I thought why not just take everything out so it's just the shell, because I also have some shells for other iPhones and iPods. So that's my collection. Next, let's talk about why Apple discontinued the iPod Touch in the first place and the whole iPod line. The reason I think they discontinued the iPod line is because one, People nowadays don't really use iPods and dedicated music players. They use streaming services like Spotify and Apple Music on their phones because it's just more convenient. What would you rather do? Would you rather buy songs on iTunes and have to plug in your iPod and then sync it? Or just go to Spotify, download the song, and listen to it? It's much easier, so people just stopped using iPods. Another reason is not many people are buying them because like I said before, the, um, they just use their phones. But I can see that some people might still buy them for like their kids or if they're not ready for like a phone or something. That's like the only real people I think that are buying those iPods. And the last thing is they hadn't been updated in three years. The last update wasn't even that great because they didn't update the design at all. It was the same design since 2012 and it had the internals of the iPhone 7 so it was pretty slow. Anyways, that's all the reasons why I think they discontinued the iPod Touch. That's all for this video. Um, sorry this video wasn't as high quality as my other videos. Um, that's it for this video. I'm still working on the gaming PC video. I'm going to have that out hopefully sometime this week. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys all later. Bye!